know, like, what, 50, 60 years ago, like, my relatives walked through these gates, were thrown in these ovens, and yet now you see, like, I think someone mentioned they saw a mom taking a picture of a smiling, laughing kid in the crematorium. Just, like, things like that make it so surreal. The most ironic images that stuck with me was at Dachau, when you're walking across the bridge towards the crematorium, I mean, it's just this peaceful, tranquil river. You see this river rushing with trees and greenery overflowing and then just barbed wire right across it too. And it's just, it's an ironic image and it sticks with you because you're like, these are things that you think of as peaceful and it's, it just sticks with you. I've been to Germany before, I've been to Dachau before. I feel like I've been educated so much on the Holocaust specifically um, that you just become numb to it. It stops meaning anything. And so this trip was kind of the first time that I had the connection of, wait, this isn't ancient history. This isn't, you know, hundreds of years ago. This is my grandparents. This is almost my parents nearly, and this isn't something that's ended. Just to watch that, you're almost in disbelief that people could do that. I think it's very important that we really, really understand what happened and how we got to the point where Keaton become, became like this industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pablo? I'm just going to be brief. Uh, I don't want to sound disrespectful or anything. Of course I am moved, I am not a statue. But I think this could just make us think of why certain topics prevail as in the general agenda, because there are gruesome things going on outside in the world right now, and a lot of people being killed, maybe not that systematically, but why are we like still recurring to these same topics when there are some other like very important and dramatic things going on in the world? But I think the importance in studying this is the message and that these were ordinary people that carried out these actions. These weren't monsters. These weren't, you know, horrible devil spawn that then decided to go on and kill people. These were people with jobs and people with families and people with, that were smart. Who then thought it was okay to do that, but that kind of thing could happen, you know, to anybody. And so studying the message, I think, is what really is important. So you understand how these things are packaged. When you talk about what's happening in the Middle East and stuff, it usually comes to the point that, oh, it's really complex. And when I went to Dachau, I was thinking to myself, oh, the thing, about, the thing about Dachau is that you, they can give you a million lectures about Second World War and you see how complex it was, but when you're there, you see how simple it is. Like, how simple it is to say it's terrible to kill one another. So this is a really big contradiction, actually. It's a shame, but they are not ashamed of it, so they are probably proud of it. So I just want to pay attention to the psychology behind killing. Uh, mass killing. It's really sick that to, to film this and just to you know hold the camera and just see everything without feeling anything. So I can see people are crying here, but those people just filmed it very in a very relaxed way. And it makes me think of other genocides that are in our history, but that we're not confronted with all the time. 
maybe the way Germans are. Um, and I think of the African slave trade and the massacre of Native Americans. And, and I just think, if anything, a film like this should make you think about those genocides as well that, that aren't as well documented, that we don't see as much, that as many movies aren't made about, but in which hundreds, you know, millions and millions and millions of people were killed. So I'm, not, I'm not saying that the, that the world will get better, but I'm saying that this is all we have. It's right here, it's in these halls. In fact, we're all more fortunate than five, six of the rest of the world to be sitting here. And if we're all we have, then, then what do we do? Where do we take that power forward? Is that media, is that us, that individual, is it culture? And I think that's you know, something really powerful to me. But think about what that means, to bring man to communication with man. And how you can do it, not only your lesson plans, and not only how you can make them literally the best you can make them, but how in other ways in your life beyond here, in the networks that you've already started, in the networks you will create the rest of your life, how you can do that, how you can bring man and communication with man. Thanks so much.